Hello, Facebook Live. I'm Tim Sullivan, and I'm welcoming you here to our fourth edition of uh, Bringing the Zoo to You, and Happy New Year and uh, 2021. Uh, this is my first time doing a Facebook chat here in the new year, and I'm happy to welcome you here to the Big Cat Walkway, where we're going to talk about one of our welfare programs here at Brookfield Zoo, which is about enrichment. Uh, we're going to start here with a very impressive set of cats. Uh, this is our Amar Leopard uh, pair. This is Lisa, who's to the right, the bigger one, obviously, and she has a cub named Sasha. Sasha is just 10 months old, and her mom is 10 years old, and they're out here enjoying some of the wonderful uh, enrichment we provide for them here at their habitat. Now, enrichment is, a, is one of our welfare programs, along with uh, our 100 plus animal care specialists who provide care every day to these amazing animals. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we have all the aspects covered from veterinary care to nutrition uh, to uh, their environmental quality. We want to make sure that they have all the best care. And enrichment is one of those things that we do to make sure that their behavior is cared for as, as well. I manage the environmental enrichment and animal training programs, which are all part of managing and caring for animal behavior. Now this particular cat is really special. Uh, they are unfortunately the most critically endangered big cat in the wild. There's less than 100 of these animals in their wild habitat, which is in the far eastern part of Russia and in the northeastern part of China. Uh, they live around the Amur uh, River, which is where they get their name. And they live in the forest there. And so these cats, are, of course, like all carnivores, are predators and they have to find their food. And they found a nice little bone there. It looks like uh, Sasha is going to get the first uh, digs at that. So we provide lots of different types of enrichment that help draw out their species typical behavior. And of course, enrichment can be made of lots of different things. It could be food, not only the food we provide, but putting variety in their food, giving them different things to taste because in the wild, they'll eat anything from roe deer uh, to rats to hares. Uh, so they're out there hunting all sorts of different types of food. And so we can provide them with different variety here as well. Whether it's the bones that they have here, which help maintain their teeth and their gums. It allows them to manipulate those things to uh, effectively use their claws and their wonderful agility. And that's what they would do in the wild. And so. A big part of enrichment is setting goals, making sure that they can get all that wonderful behavior out. And of course, it benefits our guests when they're here at Brookfield Zoo because they get to see the wonder and majesty of this particular animal. Now, as we're watching right now, uh, Sasha and her mom are out looking around. We use all different types of enrichment. Food is one of them, but of course, we want to make sure we, we address all of the animal's senses. Uh, their sense of smell, they have a great sense of smell for hunting and finding food. So we'll put out scents and perfumes all around their habitat that allows them to explore and to, to smell new things. Uh, we'll also make sure that they have uh, opportunities to express play behavior or predatory behavior by putting out different types of, uh, you might call them toys, we call them enrichment devices, uh, but they're ways for the animal to, to chase things down and to use those paws. Uh, if you have a domestic cat at home, you'll, you'll know that these animals are just as agile. And, and, and think about the speed of your cat and how agile and, and fast they are. Uh, an amur leopard like this is just as fast and quick. You just have to supersize their enrichment. If you look around the habitat, you'll see all sorts of other things. We want to make sure that their physical environment allows them lots of opportunity and choices. Uh, Sasha just went into the heated cave there and making sure that animals have different types of we call them microclimates, but it's just basically choice. If they want to get warm, there's places to get warm. If they want to bask in the sun, there's places to get sun. If they want shade, there's shade there. And of course, different parts of their environment include what they touch and contact. Like uh, the, you can see in the back there by Sasha has the wood wool, which is a type of wood shaving, but it gives them something nice to lay on. They can make a nest if they choose to, to have a nice comfortable place to lay down. And here in Chicago, we have the benefit of having seasons. And so each one of the seasons provides different opportunities to these animals. And of course, now that we're in the winter, we've had a little bit of snowfall here. And this animal is not uh, unfamiliar with snow. Uh, in the temperate forests in, in their habitat, they'll get very cold weather. And so uh, a cat like this has to be able to deal with the cold weather. Uh, and as, they, as we get deeper into fall and winter, their coat starts to get thicker and longer to keep them nice and warm. And as we get into the spring and summer, they start to shed that coat so they can cope with uh, the warm weather that we have here at Brookfield Zoo. Well, they're having a great time here today. Looks like uh, Sasha's found another bone. 
You might notice that we have a couple meat chunks out there, and we might spread this out across the habitat to give them a chance to explore and again, use their sense, their eyesight, their sense of smell. Uh, but of course, the beautiful thing about having a young cub here is that it's a good time for them to learn how to play. And so they're going out there and mom oftentimes uh, participates in that play and social behavior and offer social opportunities to animals is one other type of enrichment that we use and that helps animals to express those very important social behaviors. Amur leopards are normally solitary animals, but during the breeding season, they, they will inter, uh, interact with males and vice versa. They're out there finding each other. When they have cubs, the mothering duties come and play and they have to go out there and protect their cubs, help feed them. And this is all part of providing a great welfare for our animals. Look at Lisa, she's got those beautiful eyes. And we, we talked a little <laughs> bit about sensory enrichment uh, of course, cats have great eyesight. This animal does hunt at night uh, and, and will need a good vision. Uh, their sense of hearing is amazing. You might notice if you look at Lisa's ears, uh, those spots that they see there, like many cats, uh, give an impression of eye, eye spots. And, and so uh, a prey animal may not know which way the cat is looking. But the ears are also very sensitive. Uh, those ears can rotate back and forth and you can watch how the, one ear might w move one way because they're picking up on sounds and the other ear might be focusing on something else. She might have an ear on her cub who might come up and, and kind of play attacker here. <laughs> so that's, that's always fun to see. Sasha, of course, is learning a lot from her mom. Mom is showing her how to uh, find the choices that are in the habitats that we provide. Choice is a big part of enrichment because Animals have lots of choices and they want to have control of those choices and that really helps with their psychological well-being. And so we give the animals as many choices as possible. And with your cats at home, you want to provide lots of opportunity for them to interact with their environment and lots of variety, which helps build their resilience and keeps them comfortable with change. And so giving animals those choices uh, is just one way to encourage physical behavior, but also the mental behavior they have. Uh, have to uh, exercise as well. And just because you bring enrichment into uh, your home, or if we use enrichment here at Brookfield Zoo and the animal ignores it, it doesn't mean it was a bad enrichment. It's just that they made a choice not to use it currently. A lot of the triggers that we uh, provide the animals uh, with different types of enrichment uh, are there in case the animal has a need for that behavior. We set goals for all of our animals because enrichment is not necessarily a thing, it's a process. We set goals and say, well, what, what is important behavior for an amur leopard? And are we seeing enough of it? Are we seeing too much of a behavior? And can we change the environment in a way that will help draw that behavior out of the animal? Because the more diversity we have in behavior, that is a really good indication of, of health and good welfare. It looks like these guys are doing great. And I, it might be time to move on to another species. What do you think, Lynette? I do have one question. What's your question? My question is, do we just give them rocks to play with? Because there's a rock up there. <laughs> there is a rock up there. Uh, we have a, a, a policy here at Brookfield Zoo that we build these beautiful habitats that mimic their natural environment. We want our enrichment to blend into that environment, not to stand out necessarily. And so we actually create natural enrichment here for our animals. That rock you see is actually artificial. We make it out of a, a hard resin that we cast here in our enrichment workshop. And that allows the animals to go out there and play with something uh, because cats, as you know, really love to play. They like to swat things around. So that rock uh, is not as heavy as a normal rock. And so they can play with it. It's uh, small enough they can pick it up and move it. Uh, Sasha and Lisa might you know, have fun playing back and forth with it. It gives them a chance to, again, exercise those wonderful skills that they have that help them survive in the wild. All right, let's move on. Awesome. Well, thanks, Sasha and Lisa. You did a great job. It's so great to see you guys out here playing. So as we walk around here, I want you to think about what we talked about with those, with this particular animal and all, what you can do for enrichment with your animals at home. Uh, enrichment is really good for our animals. It helps develop a nice bond and builds our relationship. Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be a toy. Think about how you feed your animal. Are they always getting the same food in the same bowl at the same place at the same time? That's something you can change and give them a chance to experience those things in different ways. That helps encourage new behavior for them. Uh, if the bowl is not always in the same place all the time, they have to go and find it. So that might kind of trigger them using their nose or their eyesight or using different skills to find that food. And that again can build their resilience. And again, it's fun for them. The worst enemy for animals at home or here at a zoo is not giving them choice and variety, getting stuck in a routine. 
and so we want to make sure that we can provide great opportunities all the time. So our keepers actually here at Brookfield Zoo have enrichment calendars. So we, we look at different types of enrichment every day, trying to encourage different types of behavior. Right now here, we're over at the lion habitat and we have Brutus and Titus, our four-year-old uh, brothers uh, who, you know, again, they're from Africa, but that doesn't mean they're incapable of being out here for short periods of time in the winter time. They have a choice to go in if they'd like to into their heated uh, back area, but we also give them the opportunity to come out and play and, and enjoy their habitat out here. So right now, these two boys are uh, looking around. They just came out not too long ago and they start to explore. And that's what they would do in their, in their uh, wild environment is to look around and see what opportunities are available. Uh, so right now you might notice that we have a couple of Christmas trees hanging from uh, those green things. Those are actually bungee cords. Uh, big cats like this, when they are going out after prey, they have a powerful uh, predatory behavior. When they grab something with those big claws and teeth, they hold on to it and they, they get the sensation of, of something fighting back. And so hanging something from a bungee cord uh, mimics that same thing. They have to use their teeth and claws to hold on tightly and to play with an object like a Christmas tree. Likewise, Christmas trees are here from Brookfield Zoo. Uh, we, we use them as part of our holiday magic and we like to recycle and, and, and conserve these things. And so once they're done after Christmas season, we give Christmas trees to our animals, which is a great enrichment. Of course, it meets the olfactory uh, category because they can, has a great smell to it. It has good texture. So that sensation of feeling and touching the, the pine needles uh, is really nice. And of course, uh, we can add to that. I think our, our animal care specialist added a couple of meat ornaments today to help and encourage them to go up and, and smell these things, as well as other uh, scents. I think uh, we put in uh, cardamom. Well, cardamom today, uh, but things like cinnamon and, and perfumes, uh, things that draw out uh, and, and entice them and to give them a chance to smell different things is really a great way to add variety. And so the enrichment calendars that we use here at Brookfield Zoo are, we have improved enrichment. We, it's all safe for the animals. It's approved through a process. And we make sure that uh, we give the animals opportunities throughout the year so that no two days are ever the same. And so today, even though it's a, a wintry day, uh, Brutus and Titus are out there and they're socializing. It looks like uh, one of them is about to pop up there and give this uh, Christmas tree a little bit of a grab. <laughs> now again, uh, we're en enrichment is a part of the, our welfare process, along with nutrition, environmental quality. Again, our job is here to, to make their uh, psychological health and their physical health as, as good as possible. And so through our professional care, each one of our welfare programs looks at a different aspect of their life and what their needs are. We have a behavioral research department that studies our animals to make sure that the animals are uh, produ having behavior that uh, supports their well-being. And so right now you can watch the in kind of investigative uh, opportunity that we've given these animals and they'll go back and forth and you'll start to see them change. You see one of the animals looking to the left. We have another enrichment object there. Uh, it's called a feeder tube and it, that tube is, is a hollow log with holes on it. And so we can put some of their food in there and they have to manipulate it to get the food out. Providing challenge to, uh, to get their food is no different than the challenges they experience out in the wild. Uh, we try to mimic that here in a safe and effective way uh, to give them the opportunity to uh, earn a living, basically. Uh, they've got thousands of years of developed behavior and adaptations that help them to acquire uh, food for their nutrition. We can do the same things here with our technologies and understanding of their behavior and provide those things as part of our enrichment program. <laughs> that was a nice big little sneeze there. Looks like somebody's getting ready to go up on the tree here. He's, he's sussing it out. Good jump. There's this big paws. Again, this is a, a really big animal. Uh, lions are well over, you know, 200 pounds for a male uh, and extremely powerful animals when they stand up like that. Uh, he's just kind of figuring out how the best way to attack this tree is. Uh, my feeling he's probably figured out there's meat ornaments in there right now and he's trying to sort out how to get those out between the pine needles. Again, just enjoying the smells and scents of what's going on. So, well, go ahead, oh, sorry. sorry, I just had a question. So do they eat any of these pine trees or are, are they just kind of uh, rubbing on them? And... Exactly, they'll, okay. they'll rub on them. Uh, they'll take the scent off of it. They might tear it apart. 
Uh, big cats are really strong and love to destroy things. Uh, no different than <laughs> when they uh, are out there and attack a piece of prey. They, they can't just, uh, you know, it doesn't just provide meat. They have to get the meat out of the animal. And so that's where they can uh, engage their claws, their teeth, their, their powerful jaws to help uh, acquire those things. And so they have to work that out, right? So they have to look at how do I get the meat out of the tree? Uh, these, I don't want to eat the pine needles, so how do I get it out? And so animals find different ways to, to uh, address those challenges. We might think about the, the giraffe here at Brookfield Zoo. Uh, they have those 18 inch tongues and they have to have those long tongues get through those uh, very sharp thorns on an acacia tree to get the leaves. That's how they uh, get through challenges. Carnivores like this have different challenges. They have to catch their prey. They have to be able to consume it. And so they have to have developed physical skills and the knowledge on how to do that properly. And so it's great to see these guys both trying to figure out how to use this tree. Again, like with the Amur leopards, uh, this habitat has lots of uh, features to it that allow the animals to make choices. Uh, we do have heated rocks in this area if they want to stay out and, and look around. They have elevation opportunities to go and, and see. Uh, you might have saw a video at Brookfield Zoo a couple weeks ago where they were uh, roaring. And so that roaring is stimulated by events in the environment. Uh, sometimes it's stimulated by the time of day. Uh, our lions tend to roar a lot around sunset. Uh, and you'll, if you're in Africa, you would hear the same thing. That roaring may have several different meanings. It could be a way to contact other animals. And it all also might say, hey, this is my territory. I'm big and bad. Don't come and mess with me. Well, we've got the boys put at the Christmas trees a little longer. There's so much enrichment out there for them. Uh, let's move on to another animal. So we walk down Big Plant Walk here, moving east. Uh, we're going to pass by the sloth bear exhibit, uh, which are great animals. Uh, today, they're, they're not necessarily designed for being out in the cold weather, so they're nice beds and back, uh, enjoying a warm day and back there. We're going to move over to one of the largest uh, big cats in the world, which is the armored tiger. Again, same name, armor, which means this animal is from uh, the far east of Russia and uh, the border of uh, northeast um, China. And actually, these animals can actually go all the way down to the north part of Korea. A uh, long time ago, this animal, uh, this tiger, was all throughout Korea. Uh, but like a lot of animals, uh, habitat destruction uh, and uh, poaching have limited, uh, reduced their numbers. Uh, these animals aren't as uh, endangered as the Amur leopard is, but they're still pretty uh, critically endangered. And we have Whirl with us today. Uh, she's a female uh, Amur tiger. Uh, she's 13 years old. She was born here at Brookfield Zoo. And just like the lions, she has a Christmas tree to play with as well. Uh, she went right to it. Uh, it's one of her favorite enrichments. And you'll notice her going through the same kind of process. She's finding out what's available to her. Is uh, Sometimes the different type of Christmas trees give off different cells, uh, different smells. I believe we've added cinnamon to this tree, so uh, it's a great opportunity for her to experience that scent. Uh, you can see her using her nose, she's sniffing around, and maybe the animal care specialist uh, gave her a couple of uh, meat ornaments too, I'm not sure. But again, she's going to explore her habitat, see what's available, it looks like there's something up on top, oh look at that. <laughs> we gave her a nice bone there, it looks like it's a shank bone with uh, some meat on it. Uh, we love to give large uh, hunks of meat like this to our animals. It gives them again a chance to uh, get out those wonderful behaviors and uh, contribute to the health of their teeth and gums and they have to hold on to it with their claws and uh, really uh, work at getting that meat off the bone. All right, well, it's looking like uh, she's going to go out there for a little bit. Do you have any questions for me, on, on Um, this? Just what happened to her tail? Her tail? Oh, she, during her early part of her life, she had an accident where uh, she lost part of her tail uh, interacting with another cat. And so, uh, she is missing that, but it has, doesn't impact her at all. Uh, it gives her a little bit of personality, and, and she's one of our favorite animals here at Brookfield Zoo. All right, well, guys, it's been fun sharing this wonderful experience with you. Please think about enrichment of the animals you have at home, whether it's a bird or a guinea pig or a dog. Take your dog out to a dog park to do social enrichment, but make your, the lives of your animals more varied and, and enriching by doing those things. We love to have these conversations with you. And as always, we thank you for supporting Brookfield Zoo. We can't wait to see you out here soon. And until our next Facebook Live method, have a great day.